Can you please give us a brief history of your program? Uh, the Yurok Tribal Fisheries Program has been in existence since the mid-90s, but there was actually no resource for the upper community until the early 2000s when the building was built. Um, our division does quite a bit of work clear up and down the Klamath, from the dam to the mouth. Uh, we do a lot of work that the other fisheries departments don't do. Um, we also have, uh, we do lots of water quality monitoring, lots of non salmonid work, meaning we work with lots of lamprey and sturgeon and uh, little tiny bugs that live on the bottom of the river in correlation with disease in the water. So, How is this program an asset to the community? Um, our division actually does numerous things within the community. Uh, we do water quality management, which is available on website to anybody that would like to download it. Uh, temperatures, DO, which is dissolved oxygen, uh, which is a good indicator of um, health uh, health indicators for baby fish. They need a certain threshold of oxygen within the river. So that's open to the public, which hasn't existed in the past. Uh, we also run a program through our ick fishing. Ick is a prevalent disease within the Klamath system. So we run an adult project where we actually have to take a gill from the fish. So we have to kill the fish. So uh, instead of actually just letting it go to waste, we run a senior's um, uh, fish program. Um, some get it fresh, some get it smoked, just depending on their condition and how, help, uh, how helpful their family is. Um, we also run a couple of different programs. We help with the summer programs as far as the fun stuff. We take little kids snorkeling for fish identification so they can learn the different types of fish that we have within the river. And uh, we also take out our little water quality management kits so they can learn uh, about disease and we'll make little fake scenarios and have them find little fishies. And so I, I like to think that we're educating the public and our, our, uh, our youth at the same time. What makes this asset unique? Um, we're unique, I think, in quite a few facets. We're one of the few divisions that uh, has a native biologist and all native technicians. Uh, we've all been here for a very long time. Um, I myself have been here for 14 years and got to do quite a bit of different things. Um, I think being unique, uh, we actually work clear up to the dam. We go clear up to Iron Gate, which most of the divisions don't. We also do a lot, like I said before, with water quality, which is a hand that we're just starting to get into with disease prevalence within the river, which is uh, information that we're going to need to sustain any type of uh, fishable resource that we might have in the future. What does this community mean to you? Uh, I think it's important for the York Tribal Fisheries Department to really... Um, uh, include everybody, meaning, you know, uh, fish for elders, education for young people. Um, also, uh, like we, we mentioned before, the websites, which is open to tribal members that don't live on reservation and have no idea what's going on. So, I mean, the community is larger than just what's going on here at the office. I like to think that we keep our hands in all those little community pots and uh, keep people educated and informed. I think it's really important uh, for everybody to be on the same page. How can we build upon this asset? I think it's important to just keep educating people and making people aware. Um, I think that uh, the internet is a great asset for people. You know, um, you can use it at your own, um, you know, your own pace, uh, however you'd like to utilize it. Um, uh, wish list. Um, I think that we're doing pretty well. We have uh, educating the youth. It's amazing to actually go into the schools. We've been going in since some of these guys have been little, and we go in there, they're in junior high, and uh, they already know our work, um, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, things that have been growing up here. I think that we need to have more easier access uh, for um, for the public to launch boats and, and to fish and to just uh, to be a little more active on the river up here. It's really hard unless you know what you're doing and where you're going. So any type of, uh, maybe even, uh, they don't even have it in the lower river, but I've always thought little informational kiosks when you, when you get up to like a put-in or to a, a vista point or anything like that, let you know what you're looking at and what kind of resources are being used around here and what kind of assets we have around here and what's being utilized for the community. Uh, dam removal, as far as the lower dam is concerned, um, it has a lot to do with water quality. Um, better, water, better water quality is never bad for anybody that lives downriver. Um, what would open up above the dam is massive amounts of uh, cold water refugial areas, which are always cold throughout the year. It would also give our spring salmon a far, uh, a further trip for them to run up, which would enable uh, them to uh, get a stronghold into those positions that they've never had before or they haven't had in a long, long time. But if given the chance to get up there, they will. So with the dam removal, they stand a chance of being able to do it. 
uh, the website is the Yurok Tribal Fishery, our Yurok Tribe website, and it has links to fisheries and to our environmental department, which uh, we piggyback on each other. We use each other's data back and forth in uh, both of the sites.